Hello boys and girls, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. Today we are going to see what happens to an LED and its resistance if they have not been calculated properly for the supply voltage that is being connected. Let's see this example. What can happen to your LED diode? Well, let's see. The LED burned out, but that doesn't end there. See what happens to the resistance. This could happen to your electronic circuit, and today we are going to see how to avoid these problems. Well, let's continue. Let's watch the video. Well, guys, before calculating the resistance value, you must first know that LED diodes have polarity. They have a longer pin, which is positive, and a shorter pin, which is negative. And depending on the color of the LED, the LED will need more or less voltage to be able to work. This means that between the ends of the LED, there will have to be a voltage greater than that required by its color. In the case of common LEDs, red normally needs more than 2 volts. The blue and white LEDs usually work around 3 volts. Here I have some 1 watt power LEDs, these ones here. In this case, they say that they work at 3 volts. So we are going to find out how many volts they work with and the current they consume. As we saw a moment ago with an LED, these cannot be connected directly to the power supply. And if you connect it with a resistor, then you have to choose the appropriate value based on the voltage that is being applied. It is not the same to use a voltage of 5 volts than a voltage of 12 volts or 24 volts. The resistance will vary both in value and in power or size. That is to say that in lower voltages, you can end up using only resistors of a quarter of a watt. But in voltages of 24 or 48 volts, then you would surely end up using resistors of 1 watt. Depending in this case on the LED that you want to use and how much current they need to work. Well, now let's continue with the calculation. The first thing is to know what voltage is going to be used to energize the LED. We have as an example 12 volts. Common LEDs need 2 volts. Blue and white 3 volts. In the case of the red LED, 2 volts would be needed and the rest of the voltage would remain in the resistance, which in this case would be 10 volts. The idea here is that a current or intensity passes through it. How much? Well, 20 milliamps in the case of common LEDs. In the case of the other LED, the one watt at 3 volts, then we will see how much current it needs to work. Let's take this part into account. So I have current. I have voltage. We use Ohm's law which tells us that in this case the resistance will be equal to the voltage over the intensity. Based on that formula we can calculate the value of the resistor by replacing the values of 10 volts divided by 20 milliamps. Then the resistance would be equal to 500 ohms and the closest would be 470 ohms if we don't get 500. Now the power. The power is the size of the resistor. Is it going to be a quarter of a watt? A half or a watt? That is obtained by multiplying the voltage that falls on your resistor. Because the rest that does not fall on the LED will fall on the resistor. So it is 10 volts by the 20 milliamps. Therefore, the power will be equal to 10 times 20. So it would be 200, in this case 200 milliwatts. So you can use a quarter of a watt resistor, one of the smallest, 
and although it will heat up, it will not be damaged. So there is no problem in using it, but if possible, you should use the half watt one because we are very close to the maximum power of the quarter watt resistor. But let's try it and see. Very well, now let's measure the voltage in each component to confirm the data. We have a drop of 2.12 volts in the LED and a value of 10 volts in the resistor, which is the same as calculated. And the current in this case would be slightly higher. So let's measure the current. The current would then be 20.7 milliamps as calculated. Good, now let's see what other ways the LED could be connected. What happens if I want to connect two LEDs or three LEDs? You can connect them in series or in parallel. That will depend on the supply voltage they have. For example, if you have 24 or 48 volts, it is more advisable to connect the LEDs in series and not in parallel. Let's look at these configurations. For example, here on my left I have a parallel connection where each LED is assigned a resistor. When it comes to low voltages there is no problem, these connections can be made. But in this case it could also be used a common resistor. Having two or more LEDs sharing a single resistor, which is common in some circuits. since it is very expensive to place a resistor for each LED. Now how does this work? Well, in the same way we saw previously, we calculate the value of the resistor based on the voltage drop across it, which in the previous case was 500 ohms of a quarter of a watt. But in the case of sharing the resistor for two LED, diodes the value of the resistor would have to be reduced by half. Instead of 500 ohms as we calculated here, it would be 250 ohms, but the power in this case would increase to half a watt. That is to say, we would have to use a larger one instead of a quarter watt so that it does not burn out. The same would happen if you added more LED diodes. If you put another LED diode, you would have to increase the power of your resistor and reduce its value based on the number of LEDs you have. Another more recommendable configuration would be the series configuration. Well, they are something more common and more practical, since the resistance in this case does not increase its power, but on the contrary, the power or size is reduced. Since the more and more LED diodes connected in series, the drop or the necessary voltage will add up. For example, if we have common 2 volt LEDs, well, 2 volts plus 2 volts will add up to 4 volts. What this means is that the LEDs need 4 volts in total to be able to activate. If 4 volts fall on the LEDs, the rest of the power supply voltage will fall on the resistance. Therefore, it will be much lower than using only one LED. In this way, you can continue until you manage to connect 6 or 5 LEDs as a recommendation for when you use 12 volts. By using 5 LEDs, 10 volts would remain on all the LEDs, and the remaining 2 volts would remain on the resistor. In this case, we would have a low power, low resistance resistor, which would be much more practical than using resistors in parallel. Since these resistors tend to increase their power, let's see examples of both the advantages and disadvantages that these circuits present. Very well, guys. In this way, everything would be calculated based on the configuration of the connections of the LED diodes. On the left side, we would have four LEDs in series. These ones here. On the right side, we have them in parallel sharing a single resistor. 
Let's see the results and based on that we have to draw our own conclusions to choose the most convenient circuit. In the first case on the left side, it tells us that the voltage of each LED will be added in a serial manner. So that we have 8 volts in the 4 LEDs that are connected in series. If I have 8 volts in the LEDs, then 4 volts will remain in the resistor. The current that this series circuit must pass is only 20 milliamps since that is what is needed for each LED. Those 20 milliamps will pass through each LED diode therefore they will receive the energy they are needing. And based on the formula, where if 4 volts fall and 20 milliamps pass we would need a 200 ohm resistor. The power or size of that resistor is going to be only a quarter of a watt since we don't even get to 100 milliwatts. Here we have this 220 ohm resistor, the closest I have. It's quite small since it's a quarter of a watt. On the right side, however, having them in parallel to each other means that 20 milliamps must pass through each branch or each LED. Added together, this would give us 80 milliamps, and those 80 milliamps must be supplied by the resistor. 80 milliamps must pass through it, which will be divided between all the LEDs. But 10 volts must also fall on it since the LEDs are in parallel, so the voltage drop is the same for all of them which is 2 volts. This will only work if the LEDs are the same color. In the case of the series circuit, the color of the LEDs does not matter. They will work anyway, there will be no problem. In this case, they have to be the same color, otherwise each LED must have its own resistance. Well, taking into account that they are all the same color means that the resistance value will have to be equal to the 10 volts that fall on it, and the 80 milliamps that will pass through it. Then we would have a 125 ohm resistor, installed here to supply the 80 milliamps in this case. The power, however, is 800 milliwatts. 800 milliwatts is practically 1 watt, which is much higher than this 80 milliwatt one here. But unfortunately, I do not have a 125 ohm 1 watt resistor. So I will use two 220 ohm half watt resistors, which added together would give me 1 watt, and in this case, the result of the resistance would be approximately 110 ohms. So here we will have 110 ohms of half a watt. And half plus half would give me 1 watt. So it should support. So the circuit on the right, this one here has many things against it. I would not use it to make the circuit with the LEDs, especially if I have several LEDs. In the case of the left side, it is more advisable and in most cases you will find it with this configuration. Now let's confirm these results of the current of 20 milliamps and the 80 milliamps that pass through each of the circuits. Very well. Now let's measure the current of the series circuit in which we should have an approximate of 20 milliamps. And there we have 15.5 milliamps, which is an approximation since the resistance I have is 220 ohms and not 200 ohms as is being used in the formula, but it is quite close. And we can see that all the LEDs light up very well. Now let's move on to the parallel circuit. In this circuit, we have to have an approximate current of 80 milliamps. But in this case, it would have to be higher because the resistance here is lower than calculated. There we have 85 milliamps, which is greater than 80 due to the resistance. And they all work correctly. The only drawback here is that more energy is being used that is, more current, which in this case is not acceptable when using low power 
or low current power supplies. Okay, guys, to finish. Here I have two LED diodes of 1 watt each. Now, how much current do these LEDs need to operate? According to this, they work at 3 volts and since they are 1 watt, we divide that by the voltage. And we would have the current that would be 330 milliamps as the maximum current that these require to operate. The most normal thing is to place a heat sink on the back. So in this situation, we cannot give them the maximum current. We are going to give them a little less and in the case of resistance, the resistance will depend on how many LEDs we put in series. If I put four LEDs in series, it would be more convenient because the resistance would be of less power. As you can see here, it says that it has to be 3 watts. When I use two 3 and 3 volt LED diodes, which would be 6 volts, the rest of the 6 volts would remain in the resistance. And this would have to limit the current to 330 milliamps. In this case, the total resistance here is 31 ohms, which is greater than 18. So it will give me a current of less than 330 milliamps. Let's see the current with the multimeter. There you can see approximately 170 milliamps and it is quite bright. No olviden. Okay, okay, to finish now don't forget that you can connect several LEDs in series, no matter the voltage, you can even connect it to 220 volts, 110, 48 volts, 24 volts. The truth is that the voltage doesn't matter as long as you take into account in this case the power of your resistance. If you put several LEDs in series, you will help your resistance to be smaller or dissipate less heat and thus avoid any problem of damage due to excess temperature. Well guys, it has been a pleasure. I hope this video is useful to you because it will be with me until the next video. Don't forget that a like helps the channel a lot. Bye bye.